Hello, everyone. So we are starting the third section of our Unthinking Unlearning online laboratory and residency. And uh, yeah, we're super happy that you're, you joined us uh, this weekend for opening of the last sections. Last but not the least, of course, it's called Unlearning. And for this section, we thought uh, it would be really interesting to invite, hello everyone. So we are to invite artists and uh, researchers and musicians and curators who uh, will help us to rethink and rather unthink of, of how we can uh, change our way to, yeah, basically to just do music and to, uh, to do sonic practice that we usually call. Yeah, and uh, I would say that everyone we invited uh, for, for this last section are the people who are uh, trying to blur the borders between uh, everyday life and, and their current artistic practice. But that's not the point, of course. So it's just uh, an idea of how music and sonic arts can exist in this ever-changing world and the reality we've been all encountered with during the last months. And uh, maybe to pose the question uh, on what actually one might expect today from, from, from the academic, uh, academic education in, in, in terms of music or academic education in terms of sonic arts as well. And uh, maybe uh, to just see and touch the borders which are usually rigid and quite, yeah. Not, not really open in, 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 the, in this case. So uh, long story short, uh, for today's talk, we are very, very proud to uh, open this series of talks on the unlearning topics with uh, a friend of ours, uh, born in St. Petersburg, and then uh, so she, she later moved to Berlin and uh, she was participating in numerous projects, music and arts and radio broadcasting and so on. And uh, now, uh, so our today's guest, she's, uh, well, I must say quite successful in the artist in her field. So recording, putting out records with such labels like Parallax Editions based in Barcelona or Motion Word based in the United States or Boomcat Editions based in Manchester, England and so on. And uh, today I'm proud to present you Sasha Zakharenka, AKA Perila. Sasha, hey. Hello, Ron. Oh, shall I start? Yeah, sure. Thank you for joining us. And yeah, we, we're really curious to hear what you will tell us. Thank you. Thank you, Stas. Um, uh, hello, everyone. And today, um, yeah, my, my speech uh, or artist talk, I call it embodying sound because for me, the most important uh, point of research in my art practice is how to connect mind and body. And when I was thinking about how to present or how to uh, um, compile this talk, I just decided to talk about the most important topics and issues. I research in all my projects and my art practice and constantly, um, yeah, kind of use this kind of pretty broad topics to grow and evolve myself and thus my music and my art practice is just this kind of the way I share the knowledge I get from researching those topics. So my, my talk will be um, based on the pretty simple um, presentation I did, which covers like the most important topic I use practically in all my art but but like it's kind of broad but at the same time all these things are interconnected for me personally and i think yeah you'll get it so uh let me just share the screen uh one second cheek, cheek, cheek. oh no sorry um uh, wait share the screen share cheek Share. Okay. Uh, hope you can see it. 
Okay, so yeah, as I said, my, my speech is called Embodying Sound because I think for me, and just like I think in contemporary world, there is a very huge gap between connecting mind and body because we all live in constant chaotic, crazy world full of information constantly in our head and like connection with body is simply lost very often. So I use my practice to try to find a way to connect it and to on the one hand heal self heal and just by self healing i hope to inspire and like maybe heal someone uh like listeners someone else anywho um so the first thing i want to talk about is silence because um this is maybe the majorest the most important topic for me which became very prominent last year when uh, it was a pretty interesting year, I think, for all of us. Uh, and on the one hand, it was challenging, but at the same time, I think it was pretty transformational for most of us from different perspectives. And one of the things which became very important and very significant, which I discovered and started researching is silence. And when I started um, looking at things and music and sounds through this perspective, my life and my the way I see life and just like the energy changed because I just realized that silence is basically the space in between things in between sounds and you can use it like everywhere and the most important thing is that it's basically the the thing that I think help you when you just think about it just the word silence it's going to help you to slow down because you just everyone has their own perception of silence and obviously there is never a silence but just the way to look for it is kind of changed the way you uh, one second I'm sorry um, just the way you see the reality so for me it was really interesting to look to start looking at the sounds, at my movements from the perspective of silence, how much silence is between, for example, my body and objects around the room, how much silence it is between sounds which happen in the in the space itself. And uh, one of the one of the releases I did last year called um, "Everything Is Already There" for Boomcut was basically very much inspired by. Um, this notion that there is er all the sounds and the beauty of sounds is already present always with us and there is no need to search for more and overload with more information because for me what I thought that even without thinking uh, like uh, even without thinking much there is so many information going inside our bodies and minds so just yeah this perspective on silence was really uh groundbreaking and of course it's like much much inspired by john cage and Merce cunningham and their relationship and just the way they did their pieces because it was um yeah really inspiring so silence was like and still the base for me to look at the things to perceive the things and just uh kind of uh ongoing meditation which keep happening in my mind and uh, the most kind of, as I said, important thing that this appreciation, this thinking of silence, um, just give this space inside of you and space in between things and just space to think about um, life and your process. Um, and uh, yeah, during my talk, I also wanted to share some practices and rituals and things I do to inspire, to learn new things. And one of the practices I started doing uh, and do more and more is um, writing. And it's like writing poetry, writing diary, writing some observations. And one of the things um, I really enjoy doing is writing down silence. Or for example, when you think nothing is happening, but there is actually like a symphony of noises and sounds happening. And one of the things, just as an example, it's actually in Russian, just because um, I don't write in Russian that, that much, but somehow like uh, last year during uh, I, I isolation quarantine, uh, in Berlin, 
one morning it was pretty quiet compared because I live on a busy street. Um, I was just drinking coffee in the morning and kind of got inspired by all these noises and sounds which were happening in the kitchen. And of course, if there would be someone else, I wouldn't understand, I wouldn't hear them. But just because I was by myself, I could hear um, all the sounds happening uh, in the space. And it was a very, very beautiful like drone symphony. And um, yeah, I would like to read it in Russian just because I don't know, I just really, um, yeah, this was, also like talking about my art practice is very like diary based so I do things as I feel and it's all start with a concept or, or with a feeling with emotion with a message I want to transcend so it's like just happens as it is in the moment and this what happened at that moment and I just want to share it as one of the practices I do and one of the practices which actually could be very, very inspiring because this thing of writing and understanding or like, um, um, yeah, writing things about, uh, yeah, like one of the practices to write about music, but not from the perspective of comparing to the other styles, but just like trying to describe sounds. I find it very inspiring in terms of, um, you, it, it can bring you somewhere, you know, because like sounds and sounds and you can play and improvise is one thing, but you, like from the perspective of text, it's and voice, you vocalize them. It's kind of as if, and not as if, but like it's coming from your body, coming from within you with your voice, with like voice as an instrument. So this little piece is called Kuchany Drone, Kitchen Drone, and I just like how it just floated from my mind onto the onto the piece of paper I had. And yeah, yeah this is, I just will read it pretty quickly. Uh, дрон холодильника заполняет все закрытое пространство кухни. Газовая колонка наполняет толщу дрона вибрации электрического разряда. Труба протекает в ведро, эхо между. Сканируя звуковой портрет, тело вливается в толщу звука медленно паря в материи, перетекая по акустическому полю белой плитки. Это тишина. Но тишина ли это? Вопрос ответом на вопрос. So, also in this piece, um, it's, yeah, I just describe um, the, the, the symphony of the kitchen. And, of course, it's like from the one hand it can be perceived as silence, but like, is it a silence? And one of the practices I also do a lot is um, asking questions all the time. And you don't have to answer all these questions, but like, I think asking some, most of the questions contain an answer in themselves. So um, I find it also very useful. Um, uh, uh, yeah. And also continuing this practice of writing, um, when I start a project, uh, I usually start it with a concept or with an idea and then the sound follow. And after the sound, uh, after I do the sound or like um, embody my idea in the sound piece, and then I close my eyes and listen to the sound piece. And I try to listen to the sound piece with all my body. And if I feel and see the reflection of self in the music I did, then I consider the piece finished. And for one of the projects I did recently, um, I was thinking again a lot. I mean, this is just the things I think about all the time is just like silence sounds what is your body in the sound how your body react to the sound what how the sound can change your body because uh, one of the things I truly believe that sound can heal and this is one of the my points of interest or like point of research how sound can heal and how it can help healing because for example like even making music if you make music is already a healing practice and then if you make the music with this intention and you know we all listen to the music in different uh, times of our lives and different kinds of music you know depends on the mood so it's definitely have a healing um 
thing or healing aspect and yeah i really want to continue searching for it and maybe finding some some sound healing practices which can really heal not just like our emotional state but like on a deeper level so coming back to writing practice and uh, just scanning reality and sound reality with words because it's pretty powerful and also it's like I think activation of triggering and activation of brain cells through the body um, I was just thinking yeah this is just I wanted to share like this pretty simple thing but it's uh, if you accept all sounds in the moment you must likely to enjoy it and um, using this uh, thought I had, I wanted to talk about the resistance and resistance of body uh, to the sounds, to the events. Um, for example, if like, again, talking about healing practice of the sound and music, uh, like when you have a very, no when you live on a noisy street, um, you, it could be really like, I understand and uh, it can be really frustrate, frustrating sometimes, but it's again, depends on the perspective you look at it. For example, if you start resisting to it and like being angry, annoyed, there is like a resistance and there is more anger and there, that it's a different kind of energy coming. But if you accept all the sounds in the moment, like the sound of the street, neighbors drilling something, there is like noises everywhere and, and like it can, you can go crazy and it happened to me and I guess it happened to all of us but if you start accepting it as it is and like start to listen to them deeply then it's actually can start transforming and I'm sharing all these kind of things which uh it's basically all the practices and like my life experience which I leave had continue living continue researching and it's actually helping to just um, become like a more balanced and happier person when you stop resisting to the things which you don't really like what you don't expect what you don't want you just accept and then there is like a certain beauty arrives like as i said about this kitchen drone or about the sounds in a room right now around you if we're just like you know just sit quiet for a second and just uh, pay attention to all the sounds you can actually hear a lot of beauty and music in there and again if there is like silence in between there is space in between there is all these sounds which together compile a certain symphony very often and I find a lot of inspiration in this daily noises daily sounds of water flowing um, bird singing and everything combined in a very beautiful pattern which again can be a very cool inspiration or a starting point for a project or for art practice and I use it a lot I just you know for me to start something to to start a project I really need the the silence or the quiet quiet the quietness uh zone as it could be to just hear my thoughts to understand what my body feels and yeah, to dwell on. So yeah, continuing um, space in between, uh, it's kind of continuation of the topic of the silence and space as uh, understanding the, your boundaries to the things around you. Um, and um, I started uh, studying body-mind centering and I studied dance last year and it was very, useful and an interesting experience because by learning about your body and how your body react to the sound how your body uh, react to certain kind of, of different styles of music you actually kind of create space inside of you which uh, for me what I noticed when you feel the space inside of you you have more space around you so you can have more healthier kind of boundaries with the world you know knowing that okay this I like this I don't like this sound is cool like let me explore this so space in between um it also allows your brain to kind of stop slow down and 
to process uh, things you're working. So I just find all those things, as I said, um, I'm talking about, they're pretty kind of broad, but thinking about them all the time, not even all the time, but sometimes, you know, just like this very big, broad topics can actually, or like help to reduce the outer noise and to learn and know about self more. And the more you know yourself, uh, the better you know yourself, the, um, the pure, uh, the self-expression. And so all these practices um, and things I'm, I talk today is all about learning yourself more in order to, uh, yeah, be more free. <laughs> so change, change. Um, it's again in all this universe of the concepts um, I talk about is one of the most um, major topics and major for me. And I think, especially last year, um, I learned a lot uh, that change is actually like number one topic and it's pretty crucial. And it's, I think, very important to understand or like keep in mind that all the things are changing all the time and uh, the sound is changing, the appreciation of sound and music changing and of, of life like we change every day every second and the more you accept this kind of the philosophy of change or like the change as it is the i think the the easier again like there is less resistance there is less uh confrontation with you and outer world and i find change my biggest inspiration because for example even in all my music practices and my art practices I use it all the time because like we change all the time so like it's cool to constantly change the approach find uh, keep looking for new ways uh to express and also in music I kind of uh really don't um, like I mean patterns could be cool but like I really like the flow as a river you know like it's kind of flow 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 and like it never the same and and the same in music I really like to put I don't know when I uh, work with music when, when I, with, a, with projects it's usually um such a flow so there is like an idea and then I kind of get into some kind of a trance and then things are happening by itself and change is a very important thing for me just to to keep going without attaching to like, oh, it's not right, or it's it's not good enough. It's just like, I constantly think about, we change, sound change, everything is changing. So it's just um, a very useful, again, lens to look at the reality from this perspective. And also uh, accepting your body, because I think this is could be the most difficult and it's kind of difficult for me to to sometimes to accept your body and like understanding that it's changing all the time. It's kind of help you to again befriend yourself, to accept yourself. And like when you accept yourself, then like accepting the the outer or like what is outside of you is much easier. Um, Another thing I use and I think is very important in uh, daily life and my practice, and I also recommend um, to, yeah, for you to just keep in mind is observation. And it's again, connected with everything I was um, talking before. Observation, it's kind of the same as like listening, but it's like, you know, it's like different sense, but, um, I find it's very, very, maybe the most important tool for me right now uh, for, um, yeah, again, working on projects is observing because um, my life philosophy is like experience-based philosophy where I, I mean, there were like a lot of smart things written in the books and we all studied the university and the school and it's like important part of our lives, but I think the most the deepest knowledge is in uh, experience and obs and this experience you can get by observing things and experiencing things. So again, like observing how your body reacts to certain noises, 
to, for example, like analyze it and understanding that you are able to change it. Um, it's it's a hard can be a hard word, but it's actually um, very possible and very useful. And by observing again how different things relate to each other, how different sounds, as I I was saying before, how different like how a sound from a kitchen can uh, inter can can um, jam or collab with the sound from the street and what observe how you know um, what kind of I don't know melodies it creates what kind of mood how can you transform this into a sound how can you uh, transform it into like more digital world or how can you uh, vice versa for example like play it with a very simple tools is just like playing on the table or um, using things you have around of you so observation for me uh, is like pretty major in terms of learning again about your body a lot because this is like again coming like self-awareness or awareness about your body about your breath and all these things they're pretty again common but like I think we all kind of know about them but like constantly forget and like me as well so I just wanted to get today again to like bring it up because I find it the most important in terms of grounding in the zone grounding who you are and um doing what you want to or like even not even doing but like understanding what you want to do and understanding your needs and what you want to share and um uh express uh patterns um is also kind of in this tree of um notions i talk about and patterns can be not i don't want to say i don't want to like have this duality is good or bad but like patterns can be different and it can be used be, can be used different for example yeah i mean it could be cool again in in the in the music to have patterns and but here maybe because i'm talking a lot to, um, today about embodying sound and how sound is related or how it can be connected or just like what is sound to our body what does it make to our body and uh our body is constantly like we live in patterns like every day like 24 7 practically we live by patterns and one of the most also uh useful practices and tools i use and kind of it's also in like psychology like you know like your mind patterns your body language patterns is like again observing them and breaking them because um one of the things um which i find very important in uh just kind of growing and doing what you want and finding yourself is like going out of comfort zone because i think only out of like out of comfort zone you know meeting the unknown befriending the unknown and again gaining new experience can only kind not only but like these things like teach you so much and again like breaking patterns like understanding them observing patterns and breaking them for example just kind of it's a very simple tool like even like in the morning you wake up and you're like you sleep you're like a half asleep half awake you make a coffee er like not thinking like so automatic but like what if you tr you stop and just like not go uh, when you're awake you don't go like to the kitchen right away to make a coffee but you go to the street and just like you know lay, lay on the ground or something like that you know like or not even like maybe that hardcore but what if you you know not go making a coffee right away but you go to the balcony and just like uh i don't know put your hands in the air and like see what ma it makes you feel and usually just this very simple breaking up the patterns can actually trigger something in your mind and lead to some thoughts or things you actually haven't thought before or just like awake your mind to certain things you haven't thought of and i mean it's not 100 percent, but i think it's always worth trying and start like even with like little things observing understanding like or like even pat like patterns how do you make music how do you start a project how all these things 
it's like we all and like our society and like it's how I don't know the the world we live in is created it's like pattern automatic like all these routes paths like roads but like I think it's very important to keep breaking them keep pushing the boundaries keep breaking the patterns in order to activate something in your brain cells uh, again also constantly observing how your body reacts to a certain events movements and things and like just change them for example I started like you know listen to the music just try to listen not with your mind it's just kind of like thinking oh, okay what like what gear this person used or what you know or something else but like try to like as a, again as a interesting tool or practice try to react with your body you know like okay you listen to a new track or your own track or track with your friend and just like close your eyes like take a deep breath and just like you know kind of very immediate reaction without thinking not just like what will be beautiful but just kind of listen and you know maybe it will be just a very very tiny move of your shoulder it can or you can you know just it's you know all these things I talk about they're very simple but they could be very very powerful and that's why I decided to share it with you today yes experience is everything and um, um, as uh, I'm saying as I'm talking today like everything before what I said is creating this amazing and thick book of experience we live through our lives and I think this is one of the biggest um, wisdoms and knowledge in, the, in our life and for me it's not in the books or in some theories but it's like experience because I think uh, you know you can read a lot of things but then the thing you actually live is your life and your life is like completely different from books and um, so it's very important um to kind of be aware of this experience and to let this experience happen to live through this experience be it good bad disturbing amazing everything everything is an experience and again this perception of the of the reality and of the world and of yourself from the perspective of not just like damn it's not what i wanted but like okay yes it's not what i wanted but it's an experience and what i learned and this knowledge you can take inside of you and actually all the experience uh we have and this i learn a lot um studying body mind centering is that it's all stored in our body like our body is a huge huge library um of the of the events happening to us so that's why um i talk about embodying sound today just and it's healing like the healing uh healing uh, properties of sound is just because all our experiences in all its kind are stored inside of us and i find that it's um, and i know that it stores in blocks for example you know like some unexpressed emotional feeling or uh, like or emotion it's stored inside of our bodies and if we don't move much or you know and also kind of our lives is created um, like contemporary lives created that we only like sit walk sit walk and there is no movements like to to the side around and uh that's why i also encourage to move more or like to do some kind of little exercise or even again to like listen when you listen to the music to let your body be free like not listen to not only with a mind with mind but with a body and see what how your body reacts let it let the body be a listener to let the body have ears you know like ears can be in your hand or just like imagine if like your ears are all in your hand you know it's also you, you can come up with all these kind of um, practices yourself even just to um activate and again like maybe get rid of some blocks because when i um i started dancing more like professionally or like uh, was studying at this dance fabric in berlin i was just feeling a lot that and all other students were actually crying a lot during uh our classes just because we were moving not you know sit stand sit stand walk but 
in all directions. And by this, we were uh, emptying or releasing some emotional blocks in the body. And, you know, it's just a very freeing experience. And you don't have to like be a professional dancer. Uh, as I say, you just, just can create a very simple things. I also encourage to listen to music and to your own stuff or to just yet yeah, to the music like laying on the floor or just laying because when your body is relaxed it's also like the energy flows more freely you are not that tensed and you can and again observe how it make you feel and it's all experience uh, and um, in order to experience or to um, be aware of this experience and to understand it or to not even understand to like feel it uh, I also encourage and I just find it's just basically all these things I t tell myself all the time to slow down because again like we live in a, such a crazy world where like even without I was just thinking a lot last year with like even without thinking oh like even without moving moving and doing much even without just sitting still you're absorbing tons of information just tons your body and your mind can't even process and like apart from that we have to work do things and all the things we do is just like oh, very overwhelming so in order to understand why what you're doing it's very and for what and just like where and um, yeah, I find it's very important to just remind to yourself to slow down because your body is also not um, you know it's not a machine your mind is not a machine though I think uh, contemporary world and uh, society and everything kind of expect that from us that we are machines but we are not machines um, so yes yeah, slow down to uh, this formula I keep remind to myself all the time and again um, I find that like in um, in today's reality uh, and like in a capitalistic world it's all about result 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 but I find again to uh, have more connection with your body it's very important and for me it's most important is to understand the process and in music too it's like the most important thing for me it's not the result but it's the process the things i discover during uh working on certain projects and i constantly try to uh try something new to challenge myself again to uh to have an interesting process and to gain new experience which then become knowledge which with what would just becomes part of you and which can become yeah and just becoming part of you you can operate this knowledge further on so i find it's and like really and this process is basically everything is again like about slowing down observing listening to your body and yeah the process i think is very crucial part of our art practices and the things we do which very often is neglected just because you know we have to make money we have to meet deadlines we have to show results and show whatever but like yo the process is really um, i find the most important part of all of that and um yeah just thinking about it it's um helps you again to slow down too so you see like all these things i talk about they're feeding into each other Listening, um, another thing, um, another branch of this uh, huge tree called life is again, listening, uh, listening to your body, listening to uh, the world around you, uh, listening um, constant. Yeah, well, I mean, we listen 24 seven, even when we sleep, we listen, you know, and just kind of, I talk about this, things just to bring awareness for this you know i don't know uh our um again so to trigger the mind because we kind of you know yeah 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 we'll listen but do you really listen because sometimes i really like find myself when i'm stressed and anxious i don't listen and then i was like oh damn like i don't understand. and then 
I was like, okay, listen. And then when I actually act like, you know, say to myself, like, listen, I, I, something is activated in my brain and I start listening to the things or when I'm in a calmer state, I don't even have to say to myself, listen, there's just beauty, you know, like kind of water pouring from a tab in the kitchen and you, I'm just can't be like really trans by it and like I bring zoom and record it. And then I'm just like, oh my God, oh my God. Or like sometimes like if you have a, um, you know, I lived in some places where there is a road far away and it can create such a beautiful, like subdued drone. You can, I mean, you can create it in Ableton or, but it's still, you know, it's there already and you can just, you know, record it and play with it and just understanding and listening to this beauty, which is already there without us doing much because we're just used to do much. I think it's just um, beautiful again lens or window to look through uh this is an oh uh this is another what time is it okay this is uh one of the mm, simple mantras or things i tell myself uh to again overcome certain stuckness emotional blocks in the body in my mind and it's pretty simple but again it's like I don't, simple things work and like sometimes we like try to overcomplicate stuff but like actually it can be much simpler and like in the simpler stuff there's like this enormous depth depthness so what if why not is this kind of uh part of the experience uh based life philosophy it's about breaking patterns uh and it's about trying new things, challenging yourself and pushing boundaries. Because uh, again, when I start uh, working on a um, project, for example, um, because I'm like always curious to start to try something I've never tried before. And before I was very anxious because, you know, also uh, I find myself and I'm sure some others too, like we find ourselves in this expectation, expectations, things you yourself expect from yourself things uh you think others expect from yourself but actually who the fuck cares um i mean people care but i think it's very uh, again um, freeing to think think from this perspective like what if and why not and like with this intonation you can say to yourself and it's again about pushing the boundaries uh, creating I don't know kind of refreshing new content because of course we all like so many things being said we all somehow feeding into each other and this notion just help you to or like help me uh, to break free from some patterns and expectations and to um, yeah kind of push the limits of expectation to surprise yourself surprise a listener for example when you think about, uh, you know, how can you like, you have to make a project or like an album or whatever. And it's like, oh, okay, what gear should I use? What synths, VSTs? But then like, what if I just like, you know, I don't know, have a one stone and record all album with one stone. And then you think like, damn, people want to understand. And then like, why not? Like, actually who puts limitations? There is like, it's society but actually you're free to do whatever you want and this feeling and like this four words if i can say so they can be really free, kind of freeing uh in terms of like to approach something or to do something you never tried before but you're afraid but like why not you know like you, we only live once you know cheesy but it's true body mind this is like what i talk uh about throughout this um the practice uh, throughout this talk and um yeah i mean i talked about it in the beginning and um i say once again that i find just to become who you re really are to have like a deeper connection with yourself to understand your needs it's very important to connect body and mind. And again, like we're really unaware. We think like, yeah, yeah, yeah. We have our bodies like la la, but 
it's really important to consciously think about it, to understand it as one unity and to perceive body the same as mind, because we're usually so drawn in, into the anxieties, thoughts, things we have to do, things like you know, all the things we live in day, on a daily basis, but, you know, what our body says, what our body listens, how it listens, like, to perceive it the same on, like, equally as mind. Uh, yes, and um, the philosophy, I kind of, self-philosophy I came up with, again, when I started dancing, is liquid body philosophy, and I talked about it a little bit in the beginning, it's about non-resistance, it's like when you're um something is happening to you like there is an event in your life which you don't expect which you don't like you like start resisting and like it creates more tension it could create again more blocks in your body which is very difficult to get rid of and this liquid body it's again it's about like kind of this watery philosophy and like i really find a lot of inspiration uh from water and like all liquid substances because it's like in, instead of like uh, like confronting it and like hurting yourself you can actually like yes I don't like it but okay I'll just kind of move around it and just and move on you know and like this is what I find um, very again useful to think about that you know instead of resisting you can just like accept it and like kind of like oh uh, I don't like it but like okay things are moving on and like you don't have like you can't you know we don't live in a perfect world nobody's perfect the world is not perfect so it's like the only way not to lose your mind i think is just like to be like you can i really like to kind of you can even imitate it with your body and like when i was uh, studying we do did it tons of times basically every day we started with a practice when you imagine your body as a container of water and just like you flow listening to the music and you feel like how water is flowing in your hands into the head and like just like not thinking not think just completely turning off your brain and just listening to your body and I got inspired a lot from that and also I just keep keep thinking about it on my daily basis another tool Okay, I have to kind of uh, speed up because we don't have much time, but I'll just say quickly about a couple points is, uh, I said it before, is like asking questions and you don't have to answer them. But uh, again, as I said, a lot of questions contain an answer in themselves. And again, I find it very useful tool to start a project. And I find it also very useful tool last year when we all were living in isolation, far away from each other, not much thing happening. And you think like, oh my God, every day is the same, but actually how can you, and I was constantly looking for a way how to change this the same within the same, you know? And very simple thing as an example, how do you enter a day? And like, you already without answering, you know, it's kind of like triggers something like, oh, how do you enter a day? And there are so many ways and we're all different and we all enter in this trillion million different ways. So just, yeah, keep in mind this practice. Uh, another thing I just wanted to share with you pretty fast, or like I'll just read and say a couple of words is rituals. Uh, and usually these rituals are, again, help you to connect with your body. And um, yes, uh, and yeah, kind of like realizing that I don't talk about sound that much, but I kind of find I mean, this is the practices and the things I use in my daily practices, in my, in my music practice. And like my music is a reflection of my life. So this again, feeding into each other. And um, I guess, I mean, maybe after this, you can just listen to some of the tracks and just see the reflection that, you know, it maybe it will make more sense. Anyway, rituals is, I'll just maybe, talk about just a couple of them because we don't have much time and or maybe just the first one because I find it I just the what it's the ritual I started doing last year again in isolation time and I keep doing it and I find it very useful to um, again just connect with myself with my body and especially to work on the projects 
because it's like every day we live in these chats and the, our phones and other gmails and everything and self-date uh when i was feeling very overwhelmed with all this very weird digital life i just switched off everything for a day and I, I didn't open my computer i switched off all wi-fi internet and i just used my phone as a camera and like that's it and i just like and i was like okay what i'm gonna feel i don't know and it was like one of the best times of my life and i just kept started doing it all the time like from like you know every month or something just to turn off everything and just spend a day with yourself and like again listen to the sounds around you listen to your thoughts this just changed so much even perception of time is changing when you kind of you know isolate yourself for for a second from a digital life and again i find it very useful because by living in this digital life this is what creates this bigger bigger and bigger gap with between mind and body and by um kind of switching off from digital you become you like find yourself in a room with your body with your thoughts and it can be scary or you know it can be also blissful but i really recommend doing it because it's just again creating this deeper connection with yourself and the quote uh which i wanted to share here is by the founder of body mind centering school bonnie bainbridge cohen and uh she just said the other lecture if you don't have time stop and she just dropped down on the floor and she said and then you'll have all the time and she was just saying that yeah like we live in such a crazy world that sometimes yeah it's just like overwhelming and then we we're constantly like i don't have much time i don't have time i don't have time just create we all creators of our life and basically like we don't have much of our time it's again your head talking but like your body is exhausted what if you just drop down on the floor and lay down and then immediately you have all the time you want and i really recommend you to check ca conrad it's um American poet, um, they created a lot of uh, rituals, again, to connect with the reality, with mind, to overcome traumas and traumas uh, stored in body. And um, yeah, I, I just find it very inspirational and I can share or like I can ask to share this presentation with you so you can look at it or yes. Uh, okay, coming, wrapping up, I'm sorry. Um, so yeah dance um yeah this is just the thoughts um i collected some thoughts from the diaries um the, from the writings i do um again talking because i talk about body and mind body and sound in this and like sound is always part of our lives um so i was just thinking that uh, what is dance? What is movement? And I, and like, I just came came up that like dance is an archive and chain of choices. Each movement is a choice. Opportunity to be able to choose is freedom. Thus, dance is an act of freedom. And I just, yeah, fine. Just was thinking about it and just thinking about looking at the dance and move. Not a particular dance, but like even just movement, like daily movement to do, like even all these movements with hands I do. Uh, all this talk is, you know, it's kind of subconscious. I don't think about it, but again, it's like a chain of kind of maybe uh, thought of chain of choices my subconscious do because I'm not thinking about them. It just happened. But yeah, just like looking at the movement and at your body and like your body as a tool to move your voice as a also instrument to express yourself and your mind to like all this create like one unity, one whole. And just kind of, uh, I just wanted to share these thoughts just to be aware or like just to think about movement more and like what is your, what is your, what is your body language and that it's all like moving your body. It's actually like just kind of sometimes again, we don't, you know, also things, we're not maybe grateful sometimes enough and I'm trying to be grateful more and more for the bodies I have for the bodies not I for the for the body I have and um you know what it can create and you know constantly 
giving space to my body to evolve because like giving the space just like again create this connection with yourself deeper and better um yeah this is just um uh, an quote which i wanted to again uh, in the room, in the room, we aware or unaware are the events of ourselves in it. It's in again about condensing the perception of the reality to the point like, yo, there is like a room, a space, body in this room or space, and what is and like some sounds and just this simple score can be endless, can create endless opportunities, endless inspiration, endless possibilities. And yeah, I just wanted to pay attention to the depth of like simplicity we are surrounded day to day. Uh, yes, and uh, by opening up to the world, the field of inspiration becomes everything. It's, I truly believe in this. Again, it's all wrapping up what I've been talking about the past la last hour is again like challenging yourself, trying new thing, new experience, kind of it's open, like expands your mind, your body, and like the field of inspiration becomes everything. Because when, again, starting from the very beginning, silence from like, just like one sound can become so major, can be so inspiring. And, you know, it's kind of just a beautiful window to look through uh yeah i just like wanted to i mean maybe you heard some of them all the project recent projects i did it's um last year mostly it's like all the projects i did last year it's about uh this con like this direction i choose to dwell on connecting mind and body and my aim right now and directions right now is to continue discovering how it's possible to create this sonic performances where by listening to music by listening to sounds online because you know we still i mean i i was living in berlin all this year so there was no events and kind of i was looking through this perspective how can we be how can we get this closeness how can we be united while being far away and how sound can help creating this space in between bodies but at the same time uh, creating um, a feeling that we are in some one space. And um, again, all these projects continue to expand the practice of not being just like music as music, but like music as a healing practice, music as, um, and sound, you know, I don't know, as everything, as the base of, for, uh, yeah, for self-expression and, connection with true self. Um, Aseptic Stir is one of the projects um, uh, I'm also doing. It's actually about connecting this body and mind. And I started it when I was in a very intense, like traumatic state. And for me, this project was a release of this emotional blocks I was talking about earlier. And I was looking at this, how a sound can actually release this emotional blocks and and sound and voice and the intense intensity and how can you release this tension uh this suppression in the sound and it actually helped a lot that's why um uh, a septic stir is on a little pause just because it helped me to release a lot of tension inside my body and i want to continue working on it from a more performative perspective later on um Weird erotic tension, if you don't know about it, uh, it's like a platform I create, which also uh, explores like this connection of body, but through the lens of sexuality and broadening the, um, the borders of the sexuality. And like the most important thing for me here is subjectivity. So because there are so many cliches and uh, around sexuality and I'm looking how sonically these cliches and the stereotypes and these boundaries can be pushed away and how can we find something new, how can we find this intimacy in this isolated digital world and again all these things they are coming from inside of me and hopefully from inside uh, 
um, sub people who submit pieces and you know it's just sexuality is like you know it's it's very connected with our bodies it's kind of not it's you know you know <laughs> it's not in our heads but it's like it's the reflexes and tension and emotions we actually feel in our body throughout our body so it's again another practice i found uh to just keep researching what i'm interested in and wrapping up uh this talk about embodying sound i just wanted to point out to the things when i was thinking how to close um i just wanted to point out that future is unknown and the only thing to again to not to go crazy is to accept accept the change accept that we don't know and um that we can plan and just like go with the flow and that all my practices and things i was talking all this hour uh it's all about be befriending yourself knowing yourself more helping yourself self-healing and becoming one whole thing because it's all these practices it's kind of unite different parts of your body and in order to become one um and yeah in my plans and future directions is continue this uh researching Mm, this body mind practice is coming up with new tools in order to continue getting deeper myself and maybe inspire others and i want to inspire all of others listeners and uh, people in the worst world to keep changing and trying new things because again like this thing i was talking all this hour embodying sound it's I think the path to true self because it's just connect yourself in order yeah to become who you are and to express yourself more freely and to understand yourself more and then if you know that the music and the sound and everything you do art everything will just you know become a river floating from you easily uh yes thank you so much for listening and yeah if you have questions oh I have to stop sharing. Um, yeah, if you have any questions, then please, I'm happy to answer. Thank you so much, Sasha, for such interesting and uh, really well built insight into your practice. It's quite interesting for me as well. Uh, yeah, uh, I think we can uh, be heading now to the questions and I have a couple of nasty ones if you don't mind. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, the first uh, the first is about uh, what, you t what you told us in the very beginning about the, the silence and how we can work with silence and how silence becomes mm, yeah, like, like a more, more like a method, right? Than, than, than an environment. And uh, uh, I think that's what we've been seeing since the like middle, 20th century i read this essay by alvin lucier uh, the name of the essay is careful listening is more important than making sounds happen and i really love the name and uh, then of course we have john cage uh, of course we have all those people who tell us like raymond murray schaefer who's telling us that already we already have so many sounds that we should stop and just listen yet all of the people mentioned above, they still continue to make sounds. So how, how does it work? <laughs> um, I think I would say that uh, making sound is a reflection to understanding and this percep perception of silence. For example, uh, um, talking, I mean, for example, when I th started thinking about silence from this kind of deeper perspective or just like being aware of silence and putting it to like in the, as a base uh, for my practice, just my, the, my approach to music making ch changed. And, you know, like I started like using less digital sound. I mean, I still use them, but like I kind of become more interested in the sounds which are around us. And again, like making sound sounds it's kind of i think also like all the uh, artists you mentioned it's kind of you know it's the air or like the air we breathe like it's our lifestyle so it's like we cannot make a sound what i what how i think about for example myself and i was also preparing for this 
uh, talk, like, this is just, it just became such a, like, my, you know, my lifestyle. It's like, I cannot make sound, though I kind of really sometimes wish, for example, right now, I just can't make any music. I just listen a lot, observe a lot. And like, when you start making sound, I think this is about this reflection, how you're again, like your mind, your body is reacting to this perception of silence. And like, maybe before, I mean, I think it's just like, you can trace it through the music, you know, artists make, which I talk about silence a lot. And you can just see what a silence is there. For example, uh, we did with Ola, we did the silence mix, which of course not like just silence, but kind of when I'm re listening to it, there is a lot of like, it's kind of silence from different perspectives from silence as like sounds in between when it's like very minimalistic or just like the quietness of sound, you know, when, so I think, yeah, it's just like when, when we make sounds, it's just like the reflection to this appreciation of silence and yeah, kind of interpreting silence in, into sonic realm but like thinking through the lens, lens of silence kind of merge or reshape the sound. Well, thank you. I mean, that was interesting to hear your point on it because it, of course, my question doesn't mean that we need less your releases and less music. No, of course we need more Perilla and more Aseptic Steer and, and <laughs> another project. Please, please go on. Uh, though the, the, the second question I have is even probably even worse uh <laughs> and excuse me in advance uh but it's about it's about patterns mostly uh i just really like how you build bridges between art and life saying how your art becomes your everyday practice and vice versa yet there are still all those patriarchal and capitalist patterns like deeply embodied into the very existence of ours into the like into the everyday life of ours and it's always nice to tell such things as like don't focus on the result focus on the process and that's actually what I always tell to my students or to people <laughs> I mean that's that's what I usually say uh, to the people as well but what I thought uh, is that it's easy for me to speak such things and maybe it's easy for you as well since we have yeah since like I have my own privileges and access to the resources that other people probably don't have uh, which is a pity of course and uh, my question is like how how it is to start building this these practices from 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 the scratch i mean the, the practices of like blurring the borders between art and life don't really caring not really caring about the result focusing on the process and so on how to get rid of all these uh, as i said before patriarchal and capitalist patterns which force some of us to be effective successive and yeah and, and etc um I mean, I think, <laughs> to be honest, uh, I would say, first of all, it's a very hard work <laughs> because <laughs> I just like find myself constantly working on it. And like, I think breaking patterns is the most difficult one, most difficult task. But in order to start, which I find useful is to start from a very, as I said, like before, like, what if, why not, like kind of mindset and also like coming up with like, uh it's kind of i think about releasing yourself and about not like kind of being becoming more free and about releasing like those patterns which i would thought like yeah like this capitalistic like okay i have to i have to i have to and then like what if why not and how to come to this is i think just start from a very simple thing which for example last year again when i was like going crazy in isolation i was thinking like okay how can i like go from one room to another like every time differently just like and it just doesn't have to be like every day but like one day I, I was just like okay today's the day I'm just gonna go to like for example from my room to the toilet finding different ways and I mean it's kind of very simple and kind of can also be stupid but like it's again like by the stupidity and about like laughing at yourself with yourself you kind of free something inside of you which can also free this kind of like squares and these frames in your mind that you like are like expectations or like you have to like show the result it's kind of 
I think because a lot of this kind of comes again from this te tension inside of our body and by freeing kind of this, you know, with humor, with self irony, with like very simple things, like how do you hold your cup when you drink a coffee in the morning? I find just co constantly coming, coming down or coming to the simple, to the, the most simple things and and sometimes you can find it's very even difficult to break the simplest things but like when you start breaking them something in your mind kind of there is like some certain release and it can like maybe don't ex also don't expect to have like major release and you just like exit like st start like being free from all this bullshit our societies and the world imposed on us but you know step by step and i think also patience so yeah i think just starting from a very very simple things like little promises and yeah i guess this <laughs> thank you so much uh we have another one question from yeah from 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 the chat so you've been talking about this space in between between your body and sound between bodies and between sounds but speaking about the sound, we speak about the experience and the, the agent that has, in a sense, no boundaries. Uh, so the sound penetrates you and in a lot of situations without consent. And it seems like the acceptance of this as an example of the street noise doesn't always work. Oh, uh, okay. So, okay. May I read? Okay. It seems like acceptance of the sound will speak. Yeah, so how do we accept things such as uh, yeah, like noise penetration and, and how it works with your body and how it is? Um, yeah, as I, I was like, yeah, talking about it briefly, and this is like comes to like this kind of non resistance or like to liquid body kind of philosophy I have in, in my head, like just for myself. It's like things that you don't, uh, how to say, there is a lot of things we don't like and in order not kind of you don't focus on this kind of i don't like i don't like it's very annoying it's very annoying you just try to i very often to kind of when i find things which are difficult to accept like for example this noise and or like it kind of penetrates our body but we don't like it i try to look at the situation as a cube and like cube has different sides and it's like in my head i have this cube of event or situation and like one side is like oh fuck i hate it like this noise killing me and i start like you know shifting this cube and like it has a different side for example okay this noise i don't like it but you know what i can't you know leave this room i can't like i have to be in this room right now so like you just kind of i don't know acceptance i mean it's very broad things and i know it can be very difficult and it took a lot of time and years to kind of uh, embody all the things I was talking today because they kind of like they sound easy but I know that's pretty difficult but it's like again daily practice just like constantly kind of talk constantly saying to yourself that or just like constantly kind of accepting it as it's like it's inevitable you can't get rid of the noise and you can't get rid of yourself from this room so just like keep shifting this cube of the event from the perspective and just like it can be a very also I really find very useful to look at these events which are kind of hard to accept as like as a game and like how many sides of this cube you can find yes it's unacceptable yes it can be some kind of a noise noise concert from a street uh, it can be, I don't know, like start finding some patterns, finding a way how to reduce this noise. There are so many ways you can, you know, look at this situation. And again, it can be difficult, I know, but like just kind of this, uh, I don't know, it just helps me to activate the imagination to look, you know, as I said, like from a cute perspective or just find a game or to find a, just a way which will make the situation easier and again it's just like kind of requires some brain activation but like it's kind of also increases and expands your again experience and knowledge and the more you would do it do, the more you do it the more it just start happening automatically and the less resistance there will be with like oh this noise but you're like 
okay, noise, and you just, you know, go from this situation. Yeah, thank you. <laughs> really, it's a really nice perspective that you have. Um, the, the, the very last question, I think, and uh, the, it's a really short one, but I don't think that it's a simple one. Uh, so when, uh, when is the exact moment when you realize that you already un unlearned enough and it's the time to press the record button? In, in what situation? In the, in the situation of like your practice, your artistic practice, or maybe as a point of, of an, an advice to, to the participants and to the people joined us online. So when is the exact time when you realize that, okay, so I have unlearned, unlearned enough, now it's the time to push the record button. Hmm. I think I had this actually moment last year when I was working a lot and doing different projects and kind of coming up with a lot of projects to entertain myself, not to go crazy and to challenge and learn new things in the, this very kind of four wall situation moment. And the more I was doing and first I was doing like, oh my God, like kind of because I kind of didn't have, never had like a very cool like self-confidence, but like I was constantly trying to build it and I was building it by challenging myself and doing things I don't know. And I still kind of on this path and I want to continue going on this path. And I just started doing it more and more. And then suddenly I think what helped me is, um, I mean, maybe it's not a kind of, an advice, but it's just like a share of an experience. But yeah, I can also say and uh, tell about saying an advice. But what helped me a lot is just that I I heard like some I felt some reaction or like by trying things which I felt like nobody will get it. Like I just you know, but I also feel felt an urge that like I just need to share it. Like when I started using my voice more, when I started using a lot of like roar raw raw air sounds raw field recordings and just things which i thought like oh my god this is not like what people are expecting whatever but like i was kind of doing it because i felt so i was not listening to like this expectation path which i thought like okay this music field or like this group of friends or whatever expecting but i was just like i want and i need to try because this is just like my air and I, so, I mean, the advice would be just, yeah, doing all these things is just like connecting with yourself more. And there is like, everyone will find their own way how to connect, but like kind of doing things which you think nobody will understand, just kind of getting rid of the fears. I find it's very, very useful in terms of like unlearning and press and recording button. It's just like that there is no limitations and there is just so many ways. And like, if you find that this is what you want to say, this is what you need to say. And even if just also saying like, okay, maybe nobody will understand me. Maybe nobody will get what I mean, but like, I just need to say it. For me, it makes sense. And that's that what for me made sense. I was, and still makes sense. I, I just do things. And I, as I said in the beginning, like if I see the reflection of myself, like in what I do, it will be just like one sound, you know, or like, you, you know, like you, in my music, you can hear like there is just so many approaches you can do. And like, this is just the way I think about it. it's just like, if that makes sense to me, and if nobody in the world will get it, I don't fucking care. But like, I'll just feel happy because this is who I am, you know, and this is just kind of my personal path but it's again about just learning yourself and kind of getting rid of limitations from this kind of society capitalistic world but like all these frames we live in constantly finding your own true voice your own kind of approach and you only find can find it by trying things you never tried before thank you so much uh thank you for your beautiful artist talk and thank, thank you for answering on the questions we had and uh, hope it was a nice experience for you as well and I hope it help, it will help to gain confidence to all the people who were listening to us online and uh, yeah for everyone we see you 
tomorrow at 7 p.m. at Moscow time with the Ugo Skinka artist talk. And uh, so that was Sasha Zakharenka, aka Perila. Thank you so much, Sasha. Bye bye. Thank you. Thank you so much. Yeah, have a good evening. Bye bye.